a very good morning to all of you yesterday we started the chapter the ideals of our constitution right we learned what um, what the constitution is what are the ideals of our indian constitution right today we are going to discuss we are going to learn the preamble of our constitution now before giving a detailed explanation of the preamble let me read you uh, read uh, out the preamble to you okay constitution of india we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to ensure and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution okay so what is a preamble now preamble is an introductory document of our constitution it gives us the introduction to the constitution to the indian constitution it states what are the aims and goals of the what are the goals to be achieved by the government it also states the aims and objectives of the constitution okay by reading the preamble of our constitution you can clearly you can have a clear idea of what is written in the constitution according uh, you know how are the laws rules and regulations framed in the constitution okay by reading the preamble you can make out um, on basis of what the laws the rules and regulations are framed in our constitution okay so it is an introductory document like you have a uh, like you have a preface to your book right in any book suppose in this particular book social science book also you will have a preface if you go through the preface you will get a clear gist of what is there in the book okay what are the chapters included why are these chapters included what will um, you know what will you learn uh, by going through these chapters how responsible citizen you will become how physically mentally and emotionally you will grow as a human being why are these chapters important uh, and uh, which boards prescribe this uh, which educational boards uh, prescribe this book etc etc okay you will have a clear idea of what to expect from this book right similarly the preamble is also the introductory document okay it's it is also like the preface all right so if you, when you read the preamble you will have an you will have a clear idea of what is there in the constitution or how the rules regulations laws were of uh, were framed okay the a careful study of the preamble reveals that it is the preamble of it is the people of india who are stating their aims and giving to themselves we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic we the people of india if you read the preamble carefully a careful study if you carefully read the preamble it will reveal that the people of india is stating their aims and objectives the constitution is for us it is for the citizens of india okay the constitution was framed for the citizens of india for the proper administration of our country right so here we are promising the people of india are promising uh, and stating their aims and aims and giving power to themselves we the people of india we are stating our aims as a citizen of india what do we expect from our country what are our aims and objectives as a citizen of this country it does depicts the hopes and aspirations of the people of india it depicts the hopes we the people of india you know we want our country to be socialist so we want our country to be sovereign socialist secular and democratic republic we are uh, we are depicting our hopes our aspirations okay every government must keep the main principles of our constitution in mind while framing laws let us read about such principles so every government okay there the government of a, of our country may change right every after every 5 years we have our general elections so the government of a country uh, may change after every 5 years but 
each and every government has to keep in mind the main principles of the constitution while framing the laws okay now let's read the principles uh, some uh, let's understand the principles of the preamble okay sovereignty the first principle of the preamble is sovereignty we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic okay sovereignty sovereignty is the freedom to govern oneself within a territory and to be free from any external control all indians are free to govern themselves and to make laws there should be no external interference of any kind in the functioning of the government india is a sovereign country means india is a free country india is free from any uh, external control okay india is controlled governed and administered by an indian government okay we indians we choose our own government we elect our own representatives from amongst us right and no external power controls india or can control india so india is a sovereign country sovereignty is the freedom to govern oneself we the people of india are free to govern oneself within our territory all right so within the indian territory we the indians are free to govern ourselves there is no external interference of any kind in the functioning of the government okay the next principle is socialism okay socialism refers to social and economic equality social equality um, refers to everyone getting equal status and opportunities nobody no indian citizen can be denied opportunities okay nobody can discriminate anyone on the basis of gender religion caste race or place of birth etc each and every citizen of india is entitled to enjoy equal social opportunities okay now uh, economic equality what is economic equality economic equality refers to the equitable or equal distribution of wealth and a decent standard of living each and every citizen of india is entitled to get a you know to have a decent standard of living all right if a person is not able to achieve uh, able to get that decent standard of living he or she uh, should be helped by the government in achieving the standard you know standard of living decent standard of living okay uh, when suppose for example uh, sometimes poverty prevents a person from getting educated okay a person under the poverty line uh, you know sometimes may be prevented from attaining education and as such he or she is unable to get a well paid job or he or she is not able to help himself or herself and his or her family okay in such a case what happens that person is caught in a very dangerous cycle of poverty uh, a country to be so uh, to economically equal in order to enjoy economic equality it is very important to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor there should be equal opportunities for all irrespective of one's social or economic status okay that is socialism now coming to secularism india is a secular country right the preamble states that india is a secular country this means that there will be no this means that there will be no state religion there is no state religion in india each and every religious group each and every religion is treated equally okay the constitution also guarantees the right to freedom of religion as a fundamental right right to freedom of religion is a fundamental right each and every indian citizen is entitled to enjoy his his or her fundamental right nobody can infringe or violate the fundamental rights guaranteed by our constitution and right to freedom of religion is a fundamental right okay so since it is a fundamental right each and every person has the freedom to profess propagate and practice one's religion okay every religious group in india can practice and propagate its faith 
all right the and it is a government it is duty of the government to protect the life liberty and property of all the citizens without discriminating them against on the basis of caste creed religion or sex okay and it is a duty of the indian government to protect each and every citizen without discriminating anyone on the basis of caste creed religion or sex okay so secularity means that there is no state religion in india and each and everybody is free to practice to profess and to propagate his or her own religion and right to freedom of religion is our fundamental right okay moving on to the next principle democracy democracy india is a democratic country democracy refers to the government wherein people have the power to vote and elect the representatives to the government these representatives then make laws on behalf of the people okay democratic country india is a democratic country means we the people of india we choose and we elect our own representatives we vote for our representatives we elect the members no we elect our government right we make and break our government all right we the people have the power to vote and elect our representative to the government right these representatives can make laws on behalf of the people and these people whom we elect as our representatives they can make laws for us okay so democracy means a government which is elected by the citizen of our the citizen of the country and these people also will be from amongst us okay the people whom we elect as our representatives as our uh, as the you know, members of our as the people who form our government will also be the indian citizens okay so we elect our own citizens sorry we elect our own representatives from amongst us okay in india citizens who are 18 years and above have the right to vote this is known as universal adult franchise okay elections are held after every 5 years if the people are dissatisfied with the government they can vote it out thus the ultimate power lies in the hands of the people okay so democracy is the most important feature of our constitution is one of the most important features of our constitution democracy refers to the government which is elected by its own people which is elected by the citizen of its country and from amongst them we elect our people we elect our representatives from amongst us okay the people whom we elect also should be indians okay now federalism what do you mean by federalism india has a federal form of government this means that our country is governed at two levels that is from at the center and at the state we have already talked about federalism in the previous class right federalism means the distribution of power between the central and the state government the uh, the uh, the uh, governing power the the governing power of a country is not centralized okay the power to govern or administer a country is not doesn't only rest with the central government the power is distributed among the between the central government and the state government the president is the head of our country the prime minister heads the government at the center and the parliament makes laws for the country the president is the head of the country the prime minister is the head of the government at the center and the parliament makes laws for the country at the state level the governor is the nominal head of the state and chief minister heads the government the president is the head of the country okay prime minister is the head of the government at the at the um, at the center all right and the parliament makes laws for us at the state the governor is the nominal head of the state and the chief minister heads the government the vidhan sabha or the legislative as legislature state legislature makes laws for the state the vidhan sabha or the state legislature makes laws for the state the powers and the functions of the center and the state governments have been clearly defined under three lists union list state list and the concurrent list okay so the powers and the functions all right the duties the powers the functions of the state government and the central government is clearly 
defined under three list the union list in the union list the powers the functions the duties of the central government will be clearly mentioned on the state list the duties the power the functions of the state government is clearly mentioned and both these duties are the duties of the central government will be performed only by the central government and not by the state government and the powers and the functions and the duty of the uh, duty under the state list will be performed only by the state government all right and we have another list known as the concurrent list this list this list includes those powers those functions and those duties which can be undertaken by both central and the state government i hope that i hope uh, today's class is clear to you if you have any problem please do ask me on the comment box uh, in the comment box and you can also ask me in the whatsapp group please go through the videos i hope it is helping you out okay and uh, uh, in our next class we will be uh, we will discuss india is a democratic republic how india is a democratic republic okay and we will also discuss the fundamental rights thank you and have a nice day